Happy New Year! Welcome back to my channel in 2024! <laughs> I'm down at the studio taking a little break from packing. I have been packing all your orders for the last couple of days, so thank you so much. So I'll be going out tomorrow, hopefully. And um, it's actually not raining here today, which is really nice. Uh, it's not too cold. I'm wearing my sweater number 18 by my favorite things knitwear in my causeway and natural sock held together really nice texture on this and the tyler was here today at the studio um so i've just come down to see what he's done today he's coming back tomorrow to actually do the tiling and uh it smells of new building work you know that smell so yeah, I have no idea what this vlog is going to contain. <laughs> my news is I'm nearly finished my Eon sweater. It'll be done maybe tonight or mm, probably two nights, realistically. I want to do a few videos in January. I have a couple of ideas um, floating around. Can you hear all the birds singing? So nice. One of my things for 2024 is to take more breaks. Maybe I should do um, like a video about all of my intentions for 2024. Um, although I, I'm not very good at consolidating them in my mind <laughs> to start with. <laughs> but um, I'll show you in the studio here. So we now have a door which needs another coat of paint. So that's a job to do very soon. And we're doing a kind of underfloor heating situation. So that's what all these coils are. And the tiler has said that it would have been best if we could put this layer down before actually tiling. In case he nicks the, the underfloor heating. So I can obviously walk on it, but this is what we're looking at at the moment. This is inside my office, what it looks like. Really, you'll be able to see pretty well in this window how it looks. There we go. Yeah, and uh, this appears to have happened. <laughs> I don't really know why the rest of the stuff couldn't have been just put in the floor in there or in the bin. Um, that'll probably have to be dug up, so that'll be another hour's work at least, probably. <laughs> um, because I am sure my future plants will not appreciate that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's what's happening down here today. The tiles are under wraps, so you'll not get to see those until the reveal. Which hopefully won't be like a million years away. But it's looking good. I'm super pleased with how it's going. The garden is still a mess, but I think we're going to maybe try and level some of it tomorrow tomorrow tomorrow's thursday that's crazy and we need to think of an overall landscaping solution that won't cost the earth to try and make the whole thing cohesive so yeah that's where we're at with that so i'm looking for something to put down over this stone Obviously this is not level, that's a wee bit of concrete there. Down there it's just grass. This is a situation that needs sorted out. And then over here we have some crazy paving, which I don't love, but don't hate. It's fine. This was crazy paving, but I don't exactly want to relay crazy paving. And I can imagine in this area that there would be lots of like woodlandy plants, same as over here. Um, might plant another tree here where the chestnuts fall. although we did plant a few trees 
but I don't know if any of them are the right tree. So yeah. Um hear that bird. The garden really needs looked at as well. So I might do a little video with my spring planting plan for 2024 or something like that. I really need to do that anyway myself. <laughs> So yeah, better go in and do a bit more work here or else I'm not going to get all your orders out. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's another day in the middle, at the start of January sometime and my units have just arrived for my dye studio which I'm really excited about. Um, these ones are a little bit shorter than I expected but they were designed to our specification obviously so um, and obviously I am short so that's why they're short because whenever you're lifting up yarn to dye you don't want to be lifting it like above your head and at the moment I am, and it's quite difficult. <laughs> Excuse me. So we got these designs so that I wouldn't have to do that. And yeah, they're really dinky. And I have my sinks here. Let's look at them closer. Um, so I have these wee shelves below and I'm planning on, you know, storing my yarn in here, like my prep yarn, so it's not all like sitting out on the floor. Um, so hopefully that works. And then I have my three sinks. The reason I decided to go for three sinks instead of one or two was cause then I could have one for scouring yarn. So I'm basically gonna have like a source point water heater so that I can scour give a light scar because my yarn is already washed at the mill but I'd want to just give it an extra little prep here so I can do that in the sink. One of them I can have for rinsing um, things that have been in the iron after bath and then I just have a regular sink for um, dyeing like or for rinsing like normal colours or whatever. And obviously, like, I've got these bits that I can set pots on here and at this end. And probably I will store, yeah, I'll probably store my yarn in here before I dye it. And then in here, I'll probably just store all my, all my pots, which I have quite a lot of. If I'm drying out dye stuff from the garden, I can have, like, a little metal grill thing here and the, you know I can have it sitting out here to dry. I can also have piles of yarn here which I'm so excited about like to have space and room. I can't believe I'm going to be actually working in here. It's actually crazy. And then I'll just have down here for storage. I don't know what I'm going to store in here. 
just parked the car there and um, it's been quite a few days since I recorded anything uh, it's just been really busy but um I'm on mummy duty today so I did a few jobs I went to the dump I washed the car I topped up the washer fluid and then I did something very interesting I went to a place called Slemish Market Garden uh, near Ballymena. Well, it's in Ballymena. And bought a few things. I've never been there before, but I got talking to the, the guy, I think, that owns it, along with his wife. And we had some very, very interesting chats about planting and about all this stuff. He was saying that they plant biodynamically, which... I hadn't heard that term before um, and he was kind of saying that like organic is basically controlled use of chemicals and there's someone that's making a lot of money out of that <laughs> um, regulating it um, but he said this is this is different because biodynamic is what you think organic should be and he was saying that they plant by the phases of the moon which is so interesting because of the gravitational pull of like the water in the earth um, you get like better germination rate if you plant your seeds um, by I think he said like a week before the full moon is like the optimum time to like be planting and he said like his whole family are totally invested in this way of planting and all I hadn't heard of it before so I'm really fascinated so I'm going to research that I bought quite a bit of their beautiful produce I got some raw honey I got some smoked garlic. They have their own smokehouse that um, his this man's father built and used. Um, so they smoke the garlic. I got some um, violet garlic, they called it, but he said it's tarn garlic. And I got some leeks and carrots, some parsnips and beetroot. And um, I got a beautiful prince prince crown squash so i'm not sure what i'll do with it i might just roast it and eat it with some sea salt and black pepper with be nice maybe with pasta um so yeah i've got all this love lovely produce my uh, my sardine is actually on the floor of the car because i brought it with me because i was going out this morning because i thought i'd need to stretch and fold it probably needs another one now um, I'm not having a great time of it with my sardo. I'd love to get into fermentation more, but I can't even crack the sardo. Like I haven't, I don't feel that I'm reaching peak fermentation or like knowing when that is. So I'm actually going on a course. Um, it was my Christmas present from Timmy with Ursa Minor, the bakery. So hopefully I can glean a lot of tips from them. But I actually, because our house is so cold and I don't have a proven oven a few of you have suggested that I get one and I am seriously considering it but I'm going to ask them at the course if what they would recommend and um, because our kitchen probably sits at about maybe 12 or 13 degrees so like nothing really gets going like it takes like a good long time for the start to get going although yeah it gets going a lot easier than the the actual bread um it just seems to take about a day longer in the winter than the summer and i don't know how they kind of dealt with this in the olden days like people baking bread i guess bakeries just baked it and people went and bought it um but yeah there's so many areas of fermentation sorry if you find this really boring or you're not interested in it but there's definitely a lot of areas that i would want to explore but I don't have time right now like I'd like to investigate kombucha and like water kefir and what else um just other stuff like that oh and the man from the market garden also said about composting they compost in the quite an interesting way I don't know if it's actually a traditional way maybe for here not sure um, a lot of people just have compost bays or bins but he said they basically dig a trench put all whatever you're going to put in it, shred it up, cardboard, um, grass clippings, food waste, and then top it with soil, and then you plant on top of that. So that's something that I cons could consider for the new garden space. Um, 
because and then he said something about the five bay rotation um so i'll have to research that so many things to research so much to learn and so little time to actually do stuff <laughs> we've had the sickness in our house for a while i've been fine everyone else has not been fine so i've been like the primary caregiver to everyone in our house <laughs> um so i feel like i'm myself i'm just recovering from being the the caregiver the primary caregiver to everyone <laughs> so um yeah so that's my kind of juicy chat of what happened today so i'm so interested in all this stuff i feel like it's all one of my hobbies i suppose finding out all about this stuff um it's quite juicy to me so my hobbies are basically like sourdough i'm interested in fermentation i was talking to my dad and apparently my great granny used to ferment like different wines and stuff and that's like a whole different ball game so i in in maybe in a few years when i have more time i will interest i would be interested to research that more and try it um i think you need like demi johns and with like valves on them and stuff and she used to make um wine from i think dandelion and gooseberries he said um he didn't like it my dad hated it it's probably like really really good for you imagine what that would do for your immune system so yeah so my hobbies are basically food and knitting badminton and i feel like i'm missing one here what's my other hobby maybe that oh well gardening i suppose a lot of time recently has b been put into um getting the studio ready doing stuff for the studio i love interior decor as well that's kind of my other hobby oh, i'm wearing my new sweater you haven't seen this yet <coughs> this is the ian sweater by november knits you can see the moral really well here i used uh, causeway and natural sock held together i dyed them well they were two different dye lots anyway but i really really like this little moral turned out really nice really pleased with it the only thing that i'm not 100 percent happy with was my two by two tubular cast off i think apparently i should have went down like a needle size the row before it and then cast off with a smaller needle because it's too elastic and it's kind of wavy so don't really know what to do about that except rip it out and do it again which i might do it's only the front hem so yeah i actually cast on sorry this is a very long ramble now i actually cast on a new knitting project i cast on the dun robin um jumper by corinne of the woolly thistle i'm using my um swarbles and blue textile yarn which i'm holding it double too by the way to make a uh, more like an iron weight and it's a really nice peaty color which is so oh, i feel like it never comes across on camera but it's really really lush like it's not just black it's like charcoal it's got white bits it's kind of got brown bits like it's that real earthy like peaty color and i just think it's it's an absolute joy to knit with i knitted my stock and pit beret in it so i'm enjoying that and um, it has a split hem so i've just joined the split hems it's bottom up so that's quite nice i'll show you that at some point and i swatched for another project <laughs> it sounds like i've done loads but i haven't really um i've also finished painting the studio door and i was painting the door inside my house i don't even think i told you that but i'm going to put in some pictures here next so i painted it this awful color um this kind of chartreuse green and it looked really nice in the shop but i didn't know that the paint that i had previously put on the door i didn't know if it was all oil based or water based so i just got a water based paint but it did not it didn't stick to the door at all so i had to go back get a primer decide it didn't like the color change the color and now i've painted it like an off black it's the fire and ball off black color but it's mixed on a crown base and i think it is pretty accurate to be fair i've had some colors mixed before and they've not been anywhere close if you remember my renovation vlog from like last year or the year before so need to put another coat on that and then i'll maybe show you what it looks like 
and yeah I better leave this here because if I'm going to show you all this stuff I've just talked for 10 minutes and I have footage from before so hope that wasn't too rambly anyway bye Is this the world's longest vlog ever? I don't know, it's now Saturday and I had a bit of a stressful morning with my two year old so I've got some time to decompress and um, show you my day. This is my Ian sweater. I don't think you've seen it in my long cha yesterday. Love the color, turned out really nice. Pleased with that. I swatched for two new projects um, and I'm getting better at doing this because I'm finding that I'm having to swatch halfway through my current projects so that I'm not like, I don't have a weird awkward gap between one project and the next. So I did both these swatches, I think I finished them both in the same night but I didn't start them both in the same night. So. This is a swatch of my Swarbles and Blue Texel and this is what I cast on, sorry you can't see me, <laughs> this is what I cast on my Dun Robin with. So I'm holding it double for this, the fabric turned out amazing, so I'm really pleased about that. I've actually, I'm just going round and round for the body at the moment and yeah I'm really really pleased with this. Um, my next project I'm going to cast on probably in about a week or two's time is the Heli sweater. Can't remember the designer's name, just google that Heli, H-E-L-L-E sweater and it'll come up. Um, it's just kind of like a big sweater, plain. I'm finding that I want plain sweaters in my naturally dyed yarns, just I feel like I don't have enough sweaters in my own yarn so I'm, I'm working on that because you really have to knit with your own yarn. So, yeah. This is my swatch for that. I'm so pleased with how it turned out. I don't even think the light shows how nice the color is or the moral because I'm using one strand of Heart DK that I dyed ages ago and I found a sweaters quantity that I'd stashed away <laughs> at the back of the dye studio. And beside it, I found some skeins of BFL Gotland. Held them together to make kind of like an RN weight. I had to go down 1.5 needle sizes to make the fabric right. And I got gauge. I just think it's a, and again, I'm getting really into this like subtle marl thing. Like this'll be my third project like that now. Like this was my second one. And then I did the My Favourite Things Knitwear sweater number 18 in a very, very subtle marl. So this is probably the boldest marl that I've done. It's a really nice tealy colour. And then I think the only colour that I'm really missing a nice sweater in is like a really bright poppy red. So I'll have to think about what I could do for that. Maybe I should do a cardigan, but I really do like sweaters more than cardigans. Um, I'm still thinking about casting on my Ainsley, but I'm kind of putting it off because I didn't really enjoy it in a swatch. So I don't know whether I should actually cast that on or not. I just, I might just not enjoy it, but I don't want to have too many like plain sweaters in the go because I know I'll just get bored. Um, I could do with an, uh, another hat. I've been looking at a hat called the Olivia hat. Can't remember the designer, sorry, but if you Google that, you'll, f you'll find it. And it's kind of nice. I think it looks like brioche. It kind of comes up in a slight point and then it's got a different brim. So I might I might look at swatching for that. I've got a skein upstairs that would be absolutely perfect for it because the hat I knit in the Rain Skewer Mendip, um, basically, I think it kind of fits my little girl now better than me. Like the one I knitted for her is a little bit in the small size. So I just turned up the brim and kind of put that one on her today and it looked really good so I might just knit myself a new hat. So I'll show you my done robin, what I've done on it so far. Still a little bit awkward to show because it's just 
such it's on these funny needles it's not really magic look but it's really it's not really not magic look look if you know what i mean so this is um the dun robin sweater by corinne tomlinson of the woolly thistle and um holding this double kind of equates to like iron weight basically um it's actually a finger and weight yarn so if you hold it together you kind of get like iron weight I just love the peaty colour of this and I just think it's going to be very versatile, especially with the high neck. I think it'll look really cool. So I'm enjoying this and then, oh, I didn't show you my socks. I finished my three by one rib socks in the candlelit banquet colourway. I uh, had a little problem with these because I ran out of yarn because I used it for something else. So I got an, out an advent calendar that I dyed, the very first one I dyed I think, I made it into a magic knot ball and I literally just started knitting from it. It just wasn't worth it to me to rip out. I just couldn't bring myself to do it, I just wanted to finish them and wear them. And everyone who's seen them, by everyone I mean my daughter and my sister-in-law, they were like, oh, I love that too. So now I don't even feel bad about like doing a random toe. In fact, I like it. I like it. Hi. <laughs> so, um, that was for that. Now, what did I do? Three by one rib, held the natural sock double. You're gonna ask me how many stitches I cast on. I think it was around 40, was it like 44 or something like that? I don't know, I can't remember, I'd have to count them for you. So yeah, just gonna knit a little bit now. My bread's in the oven, happy days. I'm about to make up another batch as soon as my starter's ready to go. Rufus is lying here on the sofa looking very relaxed with the fire on. So hopefully you can join me for a little bit of knitting now. down for a minute and go and take the bread out of the oven that'll be it ready now so hopefully this turned out well um i've started putting my dough in the freezer for an hour before um i score it and bake it and it's definitely made it easier to score like 100 percent. so let's see what this looks like right let's see if this is any good or if it's as flat as a pancake i have been shaping my loaves as well differently before putting them into the banneton. So let's see what this looks like. Ooh, turned out good. Oops. Not bad at all. Very good. I think it turned out pretty good. I've also been just doing one score down the middle of it and I think that works better. Um, the shape's pretty good. It's quite high, which is what I want and round. Could have been maybe a little bit better shaped. It's a wee bit of an odd shape, but 
overall definitely better than the few loaves previous. I was struggling a bit with the fermentation, uh, the bulk, the bulk uh, fermentation, like getting it just right because the this house is so cold and then if I put it in the hot press then it kind of... Then it was basically like over proven. So I think this is pretty good. We'll have it tonight for dinner. I don't know what with, but it'll be nice. Maybe Mary Berry's Dusk and Chicken or something. Mmm, mop up that lovely sauce with some of this nice bread. So, yeah, I'm going to make another loaf now because, as I was saying, it takes like two to three days. Might as well get another one going and see see what it's like the next one. I think if I try and make them more regular, as soon as the one is out of the oven, just put just put another batch together. So that's what I'm thinking. This is like one of the nice squashes I got from the sh farm shop I was telling you about yesterday. It's a Crown Prince squash. I don't know if any of you have ever grown those before. I love to grow some. And I think I'm going to make, I think I'm going to roast it maybe. It would be really nice. I have another little plan. Maybe I've already said on this vlog to make some fermented garlic. Um, so I've been doing a bit of research into that. I think it takes ages to make, so, and I need to use half a pot of honey first, so, but I think it would be a really nice marinade for things like this. Um, would be so tasty. So yeah, I said I would show you my door too. It's not finished yet. I'm going to do the last coat of paint on it tonight, I think. And then I'll show it to you when, I'll show it to you when it's finished. This could do with a coat of paint too and um, that'll be the end of the vlog. So this is what it, I'll put in some pictures of what it looked like before with my green escapade and what it looks like now. This is Fire and Ball off black. Can you hear the bread crackling?